In part one, we saw how people started to use little picture symbols to represent things so they could keep track of food and drink in their holy supermarkets. But it started to get a bit old having to play Pictionary every time we had to read or write something. And what if people guessed wrong? So people started to create new symbols to represent the sounds words made, instead of just drawing a picture of the thing they described. And that's what this video's about. Some of the first people we know of to do this were the ancient Egyptians. The symbols they used for their writing, called hieroglyphics, were a mixture of the Sumerian style picture symbols, the Pictionary kind of writing where you draw the thing you want the reader to think of, and a new kind of symbol. These new symbols represented the sound your mouth makes when you speak. For example, this is a picture symbol for grain. It looks like some pieces of grain. But these are the sound symbols for g, r, a, n. And this symbol here means falcon, but it's also the symbol for a sound a bit like a. We're missing the i too, but the Egyptians rarely actually wrote vowel sounds down. And of course, they would have had a different word for grain. But you get my drift. Now, writing grain with sound symbols may look more complicated here, but just like our number system, where we can make any number ever with just these digits, with sound symbols, we can make any word ever just by learning the alphabet and the sounds each symbol makes. Phonics, yeah? There are over 170,000 words in English today, and we can make all of them with just our 26 letters. Imagine if we had to remember 170,000 picture symbols to go with each word instead. Learning to read and write would be a lot trickier. It would be like trying to do maths if you had to remember a completely different symbol for every number ever. So with their new sound symbols, or phonetic symbols, the Egyptians formed one of the first alphabets, called Abjad. Different alphabets, different kinds of writing using sound symbols, or phonics, popped up all over the world, from Mesoamerica to China. They were often used alongside picture symbols, which helped to add meaning. But then, just over 3,000 years ago, Lots of ancient civilizations collapsed in the Bronze Age collapse. Nobody knows exactly why, but it was probably a mixture of drought and fighting and maybe some volcanoes. But tribes who moved around without making a permanent home were grand, because they had no big groups of people or fancy buildings to protect. They had started using the Egyptian sound symbols, but had given up with the picture symbols because they couldn't be doing with memorising a ton of different symbols for the thousands of words in their language. So, in this particular part of the world, after most of its big civilizations had fallen, it was sound symbols, not picture symbols, that survived. But when this writing started to spread further afield, people found there was something missing. Watch part 3 to find out what, and to meet some ancient Greeks, and Mayans, and Meros. <laughs> 